all the data you are about to hear in this video is based on actual clinical and experimental evidence. The evidence identifies a single molecule produced in the body as the cause of ulcerative colitis. Treatment aimed at reducing the levels of this substance in the large intestine leads to complete healing of ulcerative colitis with a documented colonic biopsy proven cure in one patient since receiving the novel treatment in 2007. Links to all references cited in this video will be posted below. First, a little background about me. I am a clinical immunologist who is trained in internal medicine. My research into identifying the cause of ulcerative colitis began about 20 years ago. After five years of research, reading thousands of studies and over a dozen textbooks, I published an evidence-based paper in 2005 that identified a very specific substance produced in the body, which the evidence strongly implicates as the cause of ulcerative colitis. This is the paper I published, which identified hydrogen peroxide produced by cells lining the inner surface of the large intestine as the cause of ulcerative colitis. And yes, this is the same hydrogen peroxide you buy in the drugstore. As you will see, this is not just my opinion, because opinions really don't matter. What matters is the scientific evidence, and everything I say is evidence-based. I will list all references in the space below. Only evidence-based data has the capacity to cure disease. If data or a clinical treatment is not evidence-based, it cannot cure disease. This is the case report that my colleagues and I published describing one of my patients with unresponsive refractory ulcerative colitis and rectal bleeding for 39 years before receiving the new therapy in 2007. Since receiving the new treatment 14 years ago, he has been asymptomatic with normal colonoscopy and biopsies. We also published a case series of 36 patients with unresponsive ulcerative colitis. 85% of those receiving the new therapy achieved histologic remission, which indicates complete healing of inflammation within a few weeks. The other 15%, which were not published, took a little longer. The treatment is based directly on the evidence-based cause of ulcerative colitis, which I published in 2005. So how does this work? You probably guessed by now that if excess colonic hydrogen peroxide is the cause of ulcerative colitis, we should be able to heal the colitis by eliminating the excess hydrogen peroxide, and you are exactly right. In the remainder of this video, I'll describe exactly how hydrogen peroxide causes ulcerative colitis and how the treatment works to accomplish complete healing of ulcerative colitis. First, the evidence. Two years after I published my paper identifying hydrogen peroxide as the cause of ulcerative colitis in 2005, this study, which was conducted with colonic biopsies from people with ulcerative colitis, demonstrated significantly elevated hydrogen peroxide in the non-inflamed ascending colon of people with ulcerative colitis. Normal levels of hydrogen peroxide in the cells that make up the inner surface lining of the colon are close to zero. Therefore, the authors concluded that excess hydrogen peroxide in these inner lining cells can cause ulcerative colitis. Importantly, this study showed that hydrogen peroxide was present in the colon before the inflammation, which is necessary for hydrogen peroxide to cause ulcerative colitis. It also implied that hydrogen peroxide was elevated throughout the colon, because if hydrogen peroxide is high in the ascending colon that has the greatest capacity to neutralize hydrogen peroxide, then the entire remainder of the colon is likely to contain very high levels of hydrogen peroxide as well. As I will discuss in a future video, hydrogen peroxide can interfere with colonic neuromuscular transmission, causing motility problems such as constipation and other serious complications. Hydrogen peroxide can also cause genetic mutations, leading to colon cancer, 
This is why reducing colonic hydrogen peroxide to normal levels must be part of any treatment for ulcerative colitis. If hydrogen peroxide is the true cause of ulcerative colitis, it should cause ulcerative colitis if introduced into the colon, and that's exactly what happened. The authors of this case report described three individuals who developed acute ulcerative colitis after administration of hydrogen peroxide enema and stated that acute ulcerative colitis appears to be a fairly predictable occurrence after hydrogen peroxide enema. Even a small amount of hydrogen peroxide can cause ulcerative colitis. In this second paper, the authors report multiple cases of hydrogen peroxide induced ulcerative colitis after inadvertent installation of hydrogen peroxide during colonoscopy. Hydrogen peroxide is a molecular signal that attracts neutrophils into the colon, so it will cause ulcerative colitis if it's produced by the colon or introduced via enema or colonoscopy. There is more evidence, but I will leave that for a future video on the topic. Knowing the names of different parts of the colon will help to understand how and where ulcerative colitis begins. In this picture, we are looking at the abdominal cavity. The loops of small intestine are in the center, surrounded by the colon, which is the large intestine on the outside. The adult human colon is about five feet long. The small intestine is connected to the colon at this point, which is called the cecum. Moving up from the cecum, we have the ascending colon, followed by the transverse colon, which loops downward to form the descending colon, followed by the sigmoid colon, which transitions into the end or the most distal part of the colon called the rectum. For reasons related to low reductive or antioxidant capacity and high bacterial load of the colon, ulcerative colitis will only involve the colon and ulcerative colitis always starts in the rectum because that portion has the lowest reductive capacity of the entire colon, which facilitates the accumulation of hydrogen peroxide. Although hydrogen peroxide is always being produced in all cells, its production is greatly increased after exposure to environmental factors called oxidative stressors, which are risk factors for developing ulcerative colitis and having a relapse or a flare. I will talk more about oxidative stresses and how they cause relapse in a future video. With this view, we're drilling down to smaller and smaller sections of the colon to really understand how ulcerative colitis begins. What we see here is the colon with its different segments, the ascending colon, the transverse colon, the descending colon, and the rectum. The other section to the right is a magnified view of the inner surface lining of the colon, which is also called the colonic epithelium. What I'm going to do is magnify the colonic epithelium so you can get a clear understanding of exactly what happens to cause ulcerative colitis. In this section of magnified colonic epithelium, we can see the few microscopic structures that interact to cause ulcerative colitis. In reality, it's deceptively simple. The colonic epithelium, which covers the entire inner surface of the colon, is made up of cells called colonic epithelial cells. The colonic epithelial cells are arranged around a hollow tube-like shaft called the crypts of Lieberkuhn. Each crypt opens into the lumen of the colon where the stool is formed. In ulcerative colitis, the colonic epithelial cells secrete hydrogen peroxide into the crypts of Lieberkuhn. Hydrogen peroxide is very permeable through biological tissues, so when the crypts begin to overflow, the hydrogen peroxide filters down through the tissue to the blood vessel layer just below. Here you can see the arteries and veins are very close to the crypts, so the hydrogen peroxide doesn't have to go very far. The green arrows show the very short distance traveled by the hydrogen peroxide to reach the arteries and veins just below. As soon as hydrogen peroxide touches the blood vessels, it acts as a signal 
to draw out white blood cells called neutrophils, which follow the hydrogen peroxide signal straight back to its source in the crypts of Libracun. Here you can see the neutrophils depicted as white circles entering the crypts. I have posted a link to a video showing how neutrophils are attracted to cells that secrete hydrogen peroxide. The continued accumulation of neutrophils in the crypts of Libracun leads to microscopic crypt abscesses, which are characteristic of ulcerative colitis. Neutrophils also release damaging chemicals that cause tissue destruction and inflammation leading to ulcerative colitis. This is a close-up view of the crypts of Libracun, showing each step leading to the development of ulcerative colitis. Here we can see two crypts of Libracun formed by colonic epithelial cells. The colonic epithelial cells form a tight seal between one cell and another that prevents the bacteria from penetrating the deeper layers of the tissue called the lamina propria. These deeper tissue layers are normally sterile. In step number one, hydrogen peroxide depicted by these little black dots builds up in the colonic epithelial cells and leaks out of these cells into the crypts and towards the blood vessels right below. H2O2 is the chemical name of hydrogen peroxide. In step number two, hydrogen peroxide damages the tight junctions, which are proteins that hold the cells together. This causes the cells to begin to separate. At the same time, in step number three, hydrogen peroxide begins to attract white blood cells called neutrophils into the crypts. This is called chemotaxis. In step number four, hydrogen peroxide disintegrates the tight junctions causing the cells to completely separate, which allows bacteria to enter the normally sterile layers of the tissue as seen in step number five. Finally, in step number six, neutrophils enter the crypt after being attracted by both bacteria and hydrogen peroxide. The buildup of neutrophils in the crypts leads to crypt abscesses, tissue inflammation, and ulcerative colitis. This seems like a good place to stop. The primary message from this video is that all the data paint a compelling picture that identifies excess colonic hydrogen peroxide as the cause of ulcerative colitis. In fact, hydrogen peroxide has several unique properties that make it perfectly suited as the cause of ulcerative colitis. First, it is produced in the colonic epithelium where ulcerative colitis begins. Second, excess hydrogen peroxide is produced in the colon before ulcerative colitis starts, fulfilling the absolute requirement for the cause to be present before the disease begins. Three, hydrogen peroxide is cell membrane permeable which allows it to diffuse to the exterior of the colonic epithelial cell where it initiates inflammation leading to ulcerative colitis. Fourth, hydrogen peroxide attracts neutrophils and damages tight junctions, both of which lead to colonic inflammation and ulcerative colitis. Five, hydrogen peroxide causes immune activation in the colon that gives the impression of a primary immune abnormality as the cause of ulcerative colitis, when in reality, individuals with this condition have nothing wrong with their immune systems. And six, hydrogen peroxide is easily neutralized, which can lead to a cure. After viewing this video, I hope you have a better understanding of ulcerative colitis and that a cure is possible. In future videos, I'll explain why ulcerative colitis spreads to other parts of the colon after starting in the rectum. I'll also go over environmental factors called oxidative stressors that increase hydrogen peroxide and how you can avoid them. I'll also explain why the current treatment for ulcerative colitis is wrong and dangerous to your health. Finally, in a future video, I will answer the question, if ulcerative colitis can be cured, then why are you still sick? So stay tuned, there's more. 
much more. All conclusions reached in this presentation are grounded in evidence-based medicine. I will explain why this is extremely important to individuals with ulcerative colitis in a future video.